Hi viewers, in this video I will show you how my brother replaced the brake pads, the rotors and the parking brake shoes on a Kia Soul 2011. First, the car was parked on an even horizontal surface and a breaker bar was used to loosen the lug nuts. The front wheels were also blocked before the parking brake was released. After that, the car was ready to be jacked up. For safety, when the car was lifted, it was also supported by a jack stand. Now, he can remove the five lug nuts. Because the wheel is stuck on the hub, he gives a good work on it to loosen it. If you live in a region where salt is used during winter to melt the ice on the streets, your brake components may be quite rusted. If so, begin by spraying some penetrating oil around the wheel studs and the two rotor bolts. If the rotor bolts are too difficult to unscrew, you can use an impact tool. If you do not have that tool, you can use a Phillips bit combined with locking pliers. As shown, push on the bit and hit it while rotating the pliers. Be careful to avoid damaging the star pattern on the bolt. After, you need a 14mm wrench or a ratchet to remove the two bolts that hold the caliper. If the two bolts are too difficult to unscrew, you can use a cheater bar, an impact tool, or a shop hammer as shown. When the caliper is removed, you can hang it with a small bungee cord. Make sure you're not putting too much stress on the brake hose. Now it's time to remove the caliper bracket. It can be removed with or without the brake pads installed. When you remove the two 14mm bolts, remember that the upper one is longer than the lower one because of the thickness of the backing plate guide. Remove the rubber plug and look in the adjuster hole to locate the adjuster star wheel. With a flat screwdriver, rotate the star wheel to reduce the brake shoe expansion. Because my brother worked on the other shoe adjuster, he knew that this shoe adjuster was rusted and seized. Like it was done on the other side, he had to hit the contour and the front of the rotor to loosen it. The other step is to hit the rotor from behind to remove it. You may have to wiggle it by hand and use a small pry bar to extract it. Depending on the rust, it could be very easy or very difficult to remove the rotor. Note, before you take apart the remaining parts, look at the way they are installed and take the time to figure out the way the system works. Since the retaining springs and the spring cups could be very difficult to remove and install, my custom-made pliers were used to do the job. To remove the lower retaining spring, first he grabs one side of the spring and unhooks it. After, when the spring is removed, the adjuster can be easily uninstalled. The other step is to unhook the upper retaining springs. Check the sequence on how the springs are installed before they are removed. When the second spring is unhooked, the shoe guide plate can be removed easily. Pay attention on how the shoe strut assembly is installed while it is still in place. To unclip the spring cup, you hold the shoe retaining pin from behind with one finger. Then, with proper pliers, you grab the spring cup as shown. When you have a good grip, you push on the cup and you rotate it 90 degrees. You remove the cup when the pin flat head is aligned with the keyhole. Repeat the operation for the other side. The shoe strut assembly and the retaining pins are removed and cleaned. This shoe adjuster assembly is made of three parts. The middle part is a cylinder with a star wheel and it is threaded on one side. The two other parts are anchors for the shoe brakes. One has a swivel pin and the other one is threaded. This adjuster must be disassembled, cleaned, greased with brake lubricant and reassembled before it is reinstalled. If required, remove most of the dirt and the rust from the backing plate. You can spray some brake cleaner, brush the backing plate and use a rag to clean it. My brother used a file to remove the rust from the backing plate contact surfaces. He applied some brake lubricant on the contact surfaces to reduce the friction with the brake shoes. 
Before you remove the old brake shoe with the shoe lever, compare it with the new one to avoid any mistakes. Compress the cable spring to be able to unfasten the old lever. Then fasten the new lever. If any holding parts are not safe to be reused, you should replace them. New ones are sold by many suppliers. Position the brake shoe with the lever on the rear side. Insert the shoe retaining pin in position in the backing plate and hold it with one finger. The brake shoe hole should be aligned with the pin. Next, put the spring in place. After that, grab the spring cap with the appropriate pliers and align the spring cap keyhole with the flat section of the retaining pin. Then, push on the spring cap, rotate it 90 degrees and release it. Voila, it is done. Repeat the procedure on the other side. Double check the two installations to make sure the spring caps are well installed and secured. Anchor the shoe strut assembly between the two parking brake shoes. You can attach a bungee cord around the brake shoes to hold the shoe strut assembly in place. This will help you to finish the installation of the guide plate the adjuster and the remaining springs. Okay. Okay. The upper spring installation begins with the spring on the forward side. When the first spring is in place, install the second one on the rear side. Now that the brake shoes are stable, it is easy to insert the shoe adjuster in place. Install the lower spring, check if it's well attached, it should sit on the adjuster star wheel. Test the adjuster to make sure that it will expand easily when the rotor is installed. You can apply a coat of anti-seize on the half flange to prevent the rotor from sticking on it. Insert the rotor in place and install the two small retaining bolts. Rotate the rotor to check if everything is normal. Note, the type of rotor that was used did not require any decreasing. The torque for the rotor bolts was set at 4 foot-pounds. Because the shoe adjuster is not aligned exactly with the lowest position of the adjuster hole, you have to look in the hole with a small flashlight to align it with the adjuster star wheel. With a small screwdriver, expand the adjuster until you feel a small friction while rotating the rotor. Pull the handbrake and check if the rotor is firmly stopped. Release the handbrake, expand the adjuster, until there is friction. Then, contract the adjuster until there is no resistance when you're rotating the rotor. Reinstall the rubber plug. After that, you can work on the caliper bracket. When you work with a vise, it is easier to remove the brake pads and the caliper pad clips. On the caliper bracket, check if there is any rust built up behind the pad clips. If there is any, remove it with a file as shown. You also have to verify if the caliper guide pins are moving freely. If not, you must clean them and grease them with brake lubricant. Install the new pad clips on the caliper bracket. The brake pads can be reinstalled on the caliper bracket. If they slide with difficulty, you can still adjust the pad mounting tabs with a file. Position the caliper bracket, insert and screw the longer bolt in the upper hole and the shorter bolt in the lower hole. The torque was set at 50 foot-pounds. Before you depress the caliper piston, you have to remove the cap of the brake fluid reservoir. To be able to install the caliper in place with the new pads, slowly and fully depress the piston. Note, some people open the bleeder valve to discharge the old brake fluid when the piston is depressed to avoid possible fluid contaminants to flow back into the ABS actuator. Because the brake fluid was clear, my brother decided that this step was not required for his job. When the piston is fully depressed, the caliper can be installed. Make sure that the two guide pins are well inserted in the cavities when you put the caliper in place. The two bolts are installed and the torque is set at 20 foot-pounds. When the job is done, the wheel is reinstalled with the lug nuts. The jack stand and the jack are removed. The lug nuts are tightened as per owner manual instructions. 
the brake fluid was checked and leveled. After, the brake pedal was depressed until my brother felt a normal resistance under his foot. The brake fluid level was rechecked and the reservoir was closed. The wheels were unlocked and it was time to begin the run test. At the end, the brakes and the parking brakes were working fine. If you live up north, the rust is a big problem. It makes it more difficult to clean and replace the parts. Even you don't have these bad conditions, I hope you notice something that can help you if you have to work on your Kia Soul rear brakes.